And the whole point of Real Men, uh, we have church on the weekend, I tend to go through books of the Bible, and then I do a leadership talk for the men. And the whole goal here is to build you up in a world that really beats you down. We're a place that honors men in a world that really dishonors men. And uh, we live in a world that thinks that more government is the answer, and we believe that more men more husbands and more fathers is the answer for all of our cultural problems. And so uh, what we're doing uh, tonight is we're dealing with a section in James chapter three, and I'm just gonna hit one verse, and we're gonna talk about two kinds of men, men who bless and men who curse. And that's the big theme from James chapter three, verse 10. He says, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers. So this is really applicable for us here as men. Uh, My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Now, the reason this is such a significant scripture for you is you're a man. And as a man, God made you to be a leader. And if you are a husband, a father, you're not just a leader, you're the head of your household and family. And the question is not, are you the head? The question is, are you a good one or a bad one? A good one blesses, a bad one curses. And so it really comes down to how are you in your spheres of leadership, influence, this can be family, friends, this could be your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, your place of employment and or ministry. Are you a source of blessing or cursing? Are you putting life in or taking life out? And uh, this finds itself in the storyline of the Bible. Our first father, most of you know the story, his name is Adam. His behavior brought us something that is called the curse. Our father made a decision, and as the head of the human race, that decision to sin, it brought a curse on the human race. And so because of our first father, Adam, we're born into a world that's cursed. Everything is broken. Everything is in the process of decline and decay and destruction. And we feel that. And as men, we're often fighting that. We're trying to get our business and our family and our health and and our world put back together. And it just keeps breaking and falling apart. It's because we're up against this curse, this curse. Now, Jesus Christ is our God and savior. He came down as the last or the second Adam. And what he does, he replaces the curse with a blessing. And so you're either born under Adam, cursed, or you're born again under Jesus, blessed. So all of us in human history, we're really under one of two men, Adam for cursing, Jesus for blessing. And then we as men have a decision to make, are we going to extend the cursing? Are we going to extend the blessing? Are we going to be part of the problem or part of the solution? And when I talk about cursing and when the Bible is talking about cursing, sometimes we think about just individual words like, well, you know, curse words, here's your little list of naughty potty words. Any of you grow up in a house where, did your mom have a cuss box? My, my dad was a union drywaller. And so we, we were colorful with the English language every once in a while. So we had something called a cuss box. And every time you said a bad word on the list, as a kid, you had to put a certain amount of money in the cuss box. We had so much, I, we went on vacation. I mean, it was, a, it was a big, we had to build a big box and we just sort of the cuss tax. So when you think of cursing, sometimes you think of words that you're not supposed to say, or maybe your mom had that list of forbidden words. That is for sure part of it, but there's actually something quite a bit bigger. And that is that when you are cursing in the biblical sense, you're using a position of authority to literally buy someone and to predict or to prophesy or to control their future. It's not just a bad word in the moment. It might be a bad word that actually extends for generations. And so cursing is ultimately declaring that someone is to you an enemy and it's entirely negative. Okay, question for those of you that know the story on the Bible. First person in the Bible who, first being in the Bible, I'll say it that way, who was cursed? Satan. God shows up and curses Satan. He curses him when he sins. He says, cursed are you above all the livestock. What God was doing there over Satan is he was was cementing his destiny. You are cursed, not blessed. You're cursed, not blessed. And for Satan and demons, they can never move from cursed to blessed. They're just cursed. What's interesting is You and I were given an opportunity that Satan and demons aren't, and that's to move from cursed to blessed. 
God gives us as human beings this unique opportunity to be forgiven and to move from cursed to blessed. Ultimately too, when we're talking about cursed or cursing, the language you'll see in the Bible is accursed or cursed or woe. A lot of times the Old Testament prophets, woe. What that is, that's pronouncement of judgment. That's the binding of a curse. Now, um, it's interesting. I just think about this as we're here. Uh, what's the next big holiday we've got coming up? It's Halloween and then Thanksgiving. But Halloween is really, it's about witchcraft and sorcery and curses. It's about putting evil on people. It's about binding people. It's about speaking a negative destiny. And what we do is men, we can curse people, literally speak over them death. And we do this oftentimes with two little words, always and never. You always do this, you never do that. Those are curse words, not in the naughty list of words, but those are words that bring a curse, okay? So I can tell some of you are a little confused on this issue, it's probably my fault, but think of it this way. Many of you have lived under a curse and you didn't even know it, and I wanna explain it to you. Somewhere in your family history, a decision was made, a declaration was made that started to bind and control and determine generations of your family. Okay? How many of you have seen habitual sin, self-destructive generational sin in your family? You're like, alcoholism, 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 alcoholism. At some point, somebody chose alcohol over God, they chose the spirits over the Holy Spirit, and literally now a curse has come on the family. And every generation is just cursed with alcoholism. How many of you have been in families where it's generation after generation of adultery, divorce, brokenness, broken marriage, addiction? And sometimes it's like, why is it that when the kids are born, they just repeat the same foolish behaviors and patterns? It's because oftentimes at work behind it is a spirit enforcing the same curse. And sometimes as men will say negative things, will say discouraging things, will say critical or even damaging things. And what it does, it puts a curse over people. So this will be a little sensitive, but how many of you, something comes to mind that even your dad or your granddad said that sort of set an identity and a destiny over you that was really a curse? Anybody got anything that comes to mind? You're a has-been that never was. You're a has-been and a never was. That's a dad looking at his son and saying, there is no hope for you or your future. And that's a curse. That's a curse, amen? Like that's, a, that, that's, that's not a blessing. If, if the two categories that James gives us are cursing or blessing, that's a curse. And, and what that is, is that's something that can never be, what it is, that's unchangeable. It's establishing an identity that is unchangeable. Well, if you are someone who never was and never will be, what kind, of, what kind of family are you gonna have? What kind of legacy are you gonna have? Nothing. It's literally just binding generations. Other things that maybe you've heard from your dad or your granddad. You're hard to love. You're hard to love. Is that a curse? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. It is a curse. What it's saying is the reason you're not well loved is your fault. And if you were just more lovable, I would love you more. And the lack of love that I have for you is not my fault, it's yours. You have cursed yourself by being unlovable. I mean, you put that on a six-year-old boy and just see what it does to him. It literally is demonic, it's darkness, it's evil. He's gonna talk in the next section of James that these things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. I mean, he's just continuing this theme and thread. Other things that are spoken or have been spoken over you as men. Always screw things up. You always screw things up. And what that means is even if you're having a good day or you're doing a good job, it's only a matter of time before you screw it up. I mean, that's a curse. For a young man to hear that, you could hear this from your mother, your father, but if that's spoken over you, it literally is a destiny. No matter what you're doing, eventually it's gonna go bad and you're gonna be the one to screw it up. 
What that can do for a young man, that can make him very rebellious. Well, if I'm gonna screw it up, I'm gonna screw it up big time. And then he walks in that destiny and or it completely gives him a sense of powerlessness and it causes him to lack all ambition. Well, if I'm just gonna ruin everything, why even try? Why try and build a business? Why try and build a ministry? Why try and build a family? If all I ever do is screw it up, why start a project that is simply going to self-destruct in the end? Other things that maybe you've heard, maybe it was your mom, maybe it was your dad. You won't live past 25. You won't live past 25. Okay. Is that a curse? Okay, you just met my 18 year old daughter. Imagine if she gets up every morning and that's where we start her day. It's a curse. And so as men, what you probably don't understand is some of what you think is negative self-talk, negative self-image, low self-esteem, brokenness, anger, bitterness, and frustration oftentimes is a curse. You're literally living under a curse. Something has been spoken over you that is just death, not life. It makes you an enemy. There's no hope for you. And it literally puts you in the same category as Satan. Like you're terrible, that'll never change. There's no hope for you. That's what a curse is and does. It literally just gives you a hopeless sense of your future, okay? And so what he's talking about is, uh, and I'll just read it again. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. And he's talking to Christian men here who we're gonna bless some people, we're gonna curse others. We're gonna bless God and we're gonna curse our wife and kids. We're going to bless them one day and curse them the next day and they get very confused by that. And so what he says is, brothers, these things ought not to be this way. So here's how you undo a curse. Number one, you gotta recognize it. Number two, you gotta reject it. And then the third is you gotta replace it. So the recognizing it is, okay, what, what was spoken over me? Like, um, I, was, uh, I was talking to uh, a little boy not too long ago, and it was curious. I said, uh, so tell me about yourself. He said, quote, I'm my dad's little buddy. Blessing or curse? Blessing. Total blessing. That's what, I told, that's what I called my boys growing up. That's why I remember. He's like, I said, here's my buddy, Zach, my buddy, Calvin, my buddy, Gideon, they're my, my little buddy. Um, I talked to a guy in his 20s not too long ago. I said, so tell me about yourself. He said, uh, I'm the idiot in the family. You're the idiot in the family. He said, yeah, my sister was the pretty one. My brother was the smart one and I was the dumb one. Okay, you gotta recognize it, okay? Because when you, when you hear that, if you have faith in that, then you're going to make that your destiny. Okay, you can't, you can't believe it, you can't receive it. You gotta recognize it like, okay, that's wrong, okay? Some of you have been told some things that are just horrifying. You're an idiot, you're a loser, you're a failure, you'll never change. You know, you're just like your old man, you're gonna screw it up. Um, you're total disappointment, you're a coward, you're weak. And you know what? All of that can be changed by our father. Like he can rehardwire a son in an instant. And so it's first recognizing, is there a curse that was spoken over me? Um, I talked to a, a guy not too long ago and I just verbal process at real men. So just bear with me. But I was talking to a guy not too long ago, good guy, loves the Lord, making good money, late twenties, got it together. And he has no, he has no girl. And, he, and I asked him, I said, so any draft picks on the draft board, you know, for a wife? He's like, no, 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 I, I'm not gonna get married. I was like, what? why? Uh, he's like, well, cause I'll just end up divorced. I was like, what do you mean you're gonna end up divorced? He said, well, all the men in my family end up divorced. And when my dad divorced my mom, when I was little, I looked at him, I said, dad, how can you do this? He said, you'll understand when you get married, you'll be divorced too. I said, sir, you, you've been living under a curse. I said, that's not true. I said, you, you can get married and stay married. Like the whole reason he wasn't gonna get married, the whole reason he wasn't even going to become a father is because when his dad got divorced, his dad put a curse on him. 
I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm sorry your father says that. The good news is your heavenly father says something very different. You know, and you don't have to be like your dad. You don't have to be like your generational brokenness and trauma and drama in your family. And just because your mom or your dad spoke something over you, that doesn't mean that needs to be you. So first thing, if you've got a curse that's spoken over, you gotta recognize it. Number two, you gotta reject it, right? Jesus says Satan is the father of lies. Like that's a lie. In Revelation 12, 10, it says that Satan is the accuser of the children of God. He accuses them day and night. You're like, you know what? I just reject that. I reject that I can't change. I I met Jesus and have the Holy Spirit. I I can change. You know, yeah, I've done some things I regret, but the Bible says I am a new creation in Christ and it says that I'm a new man. So I'm gonna reject that my old pattern is my only hope for my future. Yeah, there are things that I regret in my life, but I'm forgiven and the father calls me a son. I'm not a disappointment, I'm not a loser, I'm not hopeless, I'm not an idiot, I'm a son. And so I, I, I reject that, I recognize that as a curse and I reject that. And sometimes this is literally quoting what is in uh, the Old Testament prophets and also the teaching of Jesus. You and I, because sometimes what comes with a curse is there's a spirit at work behind the curse. This is why you'll see generations in families, you're like, why does that family keep doing that same self-destructive thing? It could be addiction, it could be you know, drugs, alcohol, sex, violence, divorce, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, bad theology, just crazy spirituality, whatever. And sometimes we think, well, the next generation is born, there's hope. There's no hope if the next generation has the same curse and the same spirit as the previous generation. And we see this in family lines in the Bible. There are whole family lines that there's a curse that goes from generation to generation, every generation's bad. Uh, This is why with certain people groups in the Old Testament, uh, God shows up and he says, you need to get rid of all of them. Let's say it's a war and they've declared war on the people of God. People of God are told, eliminate all of those people. Why? They're all cursed. They've all got the same spirit. None of them is gonna change. In 17 generations, we're gonna take this problem and we're just going to multiply it. It's not going to get any better. And people sometimes look at God in the Bible and they judge They're like, how could God do that? Well, God knows their heart and God knows their future and God knows that their heart is not going to change and their future is only going to multiply. And so for you and I, it's saying, you know what? I am not going to march into that future that the curse over me or the demonic forces in my family have pressed me toward. I, I talked to a guy not too long ago and I just looked at him, I said, uh, You can be forgiven, you can be sober, you can be married and you can be a good dad. He looked at me and says, I can? I said, what do you think I said? Yes. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, that's what what God's word said. That's what your father says. He said, well, nobody's ever told me that. All he was ever told was, you can't change your life. You probably shouldn't get married. And if you have a kid, you're gonna be a terrible dad. Just cursed him. It's like, no, 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 you need to recognize that. And then what? Reject that. Jesus says, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Literally, this guy got delivered. He looked at me, he's like, oh, well then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sober and I'm gonna be a husband and I'm gonna be a father. I love kids, I'd love to be a dad. I was like, oh yeah, okay. Literally in my, in my, in my moment with him, I saw a curse lift. He went from a guy who was gonna keep drinking, sleeping with girls and never having kids to a guy who decided he wanted to stop drinking, learn how to be a good husband. And he was really excited about coaching his kids little league team someday. You know what that is? That's just the truth sets you free. You gotta recognize it, you gotta reject it. And then here's what you need to do. You need to replace it. Jesus has a principle called seven, I call it the principle of seven demons. He says, if you've got a demon and you get rid of it and you don't replace it with the Holy Spirit, what do you get? seven more demons, which is not better. It's different, but it's not better. So what some people will do, they'll get rid of a curse 
And if they don't replace it with the truth of God's word and the presence of the Holy Spirit, all they get is just seven more curses. So, man, it's gotten very sober in the room. I think we've hit a real nerve in the soul of you men, and I love you, and it's an honor to teach you. But who spoke a curse over your life? Was it your mom? Was it your dad? Was it your abuser? Was it your coach? Was it your boss? Was it your friend? Who spoke a curse over your life? Recognize it. Okay, that was not from the Lord. Reject it. Mm, I am not going to believe that. And then replace that with what? The Holy Spirit, the word of God, the blessing. So the way you overcome the cursing is with the blessing, okay? So let me tell you a little bit about the blessing. Whereas a cursing is negative, a blessing is positive. Where a curse brings death, a blessing brings life. Where a curse is hopeless, blessing is hopeful. And where a curse um, binds you to a horrible future, a blessing unleashes and unlocks you to a great future. Um, my pastor did this for me as a new Christian. So I'm just gonna verbal process and be totally real with here at Real Men. So before I met the Lord, um, I think for sure I would have been a guy who was very, very promiscuous. I think fidelity to one woman would not have been something that I would have even had on the hypothetical possibility of a lifelong horizon. And I got saved and I, I thought, I love Grace. We were dating at the time, but I thought, man, there's, you know, the thought of marrying one woman and, and how many of you single guys are like, I don't know, man, whole life with one woman. Here's what I'll tell you about one woman. She changes a lot. So it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> like it, like it's, I know, shout, be, don't tell the girls this, but sometimes they change. So you every day you're like, who's here today? You know, who, who we got? So, so I was talking to my pastor and I told him, I said, I, I love grace and I'm a new Christian. And I, I said, but man, I said, this whole lifelong fidelity to one woman thing. He looked at me, he said, uh, you'll be fine. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, he said, you know what? The Holy Spirit's gonna change your desires. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. God's gonna give you a supernatural love for your wife. The Holy Spirit is the source of love. So you never have to worry about running out of love because he poured out his love into our hearts. The Holy Spirit in me has given us. And he said, not only is she gonna be your wife, the, she is the father's daughter. And I'm very sure that God the father is gonna want you to love his daughter well. And so he's going to make sure that he gives you every opportunity and resource to be faithful to her. You know what he did in that moment? What did he speak over me? Blessing. Blessing. He's like, oh, you have a father, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the forgiveness of Jesus, you have the word of God. And he just told me, no, no, no. Hey, I remember at that time, I was a 19 year old, brand new Christian in college. Here's my whole life. Is it gonna be down the path of cursing or blessing? Am I gonna walk in some sort of self-destructive destiny or some sort of life-giving destiny? And I, I received that. I, I thought, you know what? That's true. I'm gonna receive that. I'm gonna live in light of that. I'm gonna trust that. That is what the word of God says. I'm a Bible guy. And so um, I met Grace March 12th, 1988. I'm certainly not a perfect man, that's for sure. But I've been faithful to my wife ever since. There's only, uh, there's only, there's only two girls that I've held hands or given a kiss or snuggled with since March 12th, 1988. Do you know who they are? My daughters. Had my pastor, I hadn't even thought of it till this moment. Had my pastor not blessed me at the age of 19, I couldn't introduce you to my daughter at the age of 18. Okay? He put a blessing over me that allowed me to be faithful to my wife so that I could be close with my daughter. So I can kiss her because he blessed me so I can bless her. And my whole prayer and goal is when she gets married, I wanna bless her husband. And when they have grandkids, I wanna bless the grandkids. And when the great grandkids come, I hope I'm still here, you know? And if so, guess what I wanna do? I wanna bless them. The most enjoyable thing a man can do um, 
is be a blessing. When you get to take God's grace and put it on the people that you love, when you get to put forgiveness and love and mercy and hope and life in someone that is your spouse, your kids, your friends, your, your comrades in ministry, it is the best part of life. Because men, we were made for impact, we were made for legacy, we were made for generational impact. And every single man is a legacy maker. There's just two kinds of men. Men who make a cursed legacy, men who make a blessed legacy. So here at Trinity, our little language is, um, we open our Bibles to learn, we open our lives to love so that lives and legacies are transformed. That little legacy piece is my hook to minister to men. It's my hook to minister to men. Everything in a man is built for legacy. The problem is most of us start cursed and unless we recognize it, reject it and replace it, guess what our legacy is? It's cursed. Now, when we become a Christian, we get a new father, we're part of a new family, we get a new nature, we get a new authority of scripture, we, we get a, a new desires from the Holy Spirit and God speaks blessing over us. So now the legacy that we can live or leave is a legacy of blessing. Now, as I say this, many of you men are feeling very convicted because you're thinking about decisions you've made, words you've said with your wife, with your kids, whatever the case may be, and we all have. You're like, that was cursing, not blessing. That was death, not life. That was hopeless, not hopeful. That was not going to lead to fruitfulness. That was going to lead to fault finding and pain. So here's the key. As a man, if you have cursed someone, guess what you need to do? Take it off them and put blessing on them. This is one of the greatest gifts that a husband and a father can give to his children in particular. How powerful is it if the man who put the curse on you repents, apologizes, takes the curse off you and blesses you? Some of you older men are at the end of your run and you're looking back saying, I, I, man, I, put a, I cursed him, man. I, I discouraged him when I should have encouraged him. I, I just beat him down when I should have built him up. I, I just yelled at him. I, I said always and never, and I gave him a negative nickname, or I just, man, I just punched him in the soul. You're looking at it saying, how do I fix it? Why do we have a relationship? We're coming into the holidays. It's so messed up. Here, it's very simple. Just take the curse off, replace it with a blessing and see what the God, the, the God of the universe does to bless that. One of the most powerful things that a head can do is just repent. Just say, I was wrong, I am sorry. This is what I said, and you know what? That's not true, this is what I should have said. So let me take this off and let me put this on. Let, let me remove this and let me replace it with this. I didn't know we were gonna get this deep tonight. Very practically, as men, the people that are under your leadership, influence, and authority, is their experience blessing or cursing? Which is it? For those of us that wanna bless, practically men, share with me, and this would be a good discussion around your table, what are some things that a man can do to put a blessing? What can you practically do when you get home tonight, even on your own family? What can you do to put a blessing on them? Be grateful. Just be grateful. Right, encourage. encourage. Gratefulness is a big thing. And even if you've got problems, it's finding things you are grateful for and encouraging those and hoping that that kickstarts some momentum and trust. You know, and, and encouragement because what happens is oftentimes we find something that's broken or painful or frustrating. And we, so we need to address the issue, but we can either curse them or bless them by encouraging them, we're blessing them. We're saying, this was frustrating, this was a problem. You know, I, I know that this is an issue in our relationship, but here, here's what I do know. The Lord loves us, you know, our God is a God of grace, that the future doesn't need to look like the past, that we can get out of this cycle, there is hope for us. All of a sudden now, you're putting blessing. 
So the, the issue is not that you don't deal with issues and problems, but you don't make them worse by putting, a bless, by putting a curse over them. You make them better by putting a blessing over them. Other things that a man can do to just put blessing. Serve. Serve. How can I help? What do you need? What's a burden that I can lift? Life is hard. How can I be a blessing? How can I be... Uh, someone that you can depend on to try and help you um, enjoy the future that God has for you. Other things we can do as men, just pray. How many of you, somebody put a blessing over you by just praying for you? It's incredible. Um, Most people on planet earth their whole life is just cursing. There's no blessing. And most people in life, it's a lot of conversations and arguments and no praying. And when you pray, it talks about the laying on of hands when you pray. And what that is, that is physically saying, I accept you, I don't reject you. I'm here for you, I'm in it with you. And I'm going to pray over you and I'm gonna invite the Holy Spirit to come get involved and bless you. And oftentimes what happens, you and I as men, we can greatly underestimate the authority and gravitas of our position. And I'm just telling you, man, if you just pray over people, you are taking a covenantal head position and you are saying as head of this household, head of this marriage, head of these children, I am taking and I'm putting blessing down. Preach it. I'm putting blessing down and I'm gonna pray for them and I'm gonna pray with them and I'm gonna pray over them. Other things we can do as men to put blessing. Show grace. Show grace. I mean, how many of us really love the fact that our Father does blessing and grace? That's why we're all here, amen? Okay, we're all here because our Heavenly Father, he does, he does grace and blessing. Right? He doesn't do punishment and cursing. He does grace and blessing. And then he wants us as men to be like our Father, to be good sons and to put grace on people. Uh, There's a little line, persona non grata, means a person without grace. Here's what I'm telling you. Most people are persona non grata. Most people, there's no grace for them. Now, here's one of the reasons as men, just be honest, why we don't put blessing on each other, because nobody puts a blessing on us. Most of you men, your life is largely cursed. What is said about you by extended family, critics, former spouses, employers, it's just cursing. And so as men, sometimes we think, well, I don't get a blessing, so I don't give a blessing. This is where Christian faith makes all the difference. God is your father. You are his son. He has blessing for you, not cursing. He has encouragement for you, not discouragement. He's there to help you. He's not there to harm you. You can trust him. You don't need to be afraid of him. You are his son. And he wants to put blessing over you. And then he wants you to learn to put blessing over others because what the father wants, he wants the blessing that flows from his grace to flow through you for how long? Generations, generations. We see this in the Bible, I'll close with this. One way to look at the Bible, and we're gonna get into this when we get into the book of Genesis starting in January, there are men, each generation that make a decision that their legacy is gonna be cursed or it's gonna be blessed. Abraham's not a perfect guy and he doesn't have a great family, but his family is blessed in a way that his father's generation, he was a pagan and an unbeliever, was cursed, okay? Let me ask you this. How many of you, the summary of your family up until you would be cursed? How many of you, you're like, looking back, you're like, my family was a cursed family, okay? How many of you, you're looking back at your family, like, actually, my family was a blessed family. Blessed family, okay? Now, the question is, when your kids 
when your grandkids, when your great grandkids are asked that question tonight, you make the decision what their answer is. Amen. We're making decisions for people that aren't even on the planet yet, but they're in the heart of God. <clears throat> you and I are making decisions that my people under my headship, they're going to be blessed, not cursed. And I mean to be the one who pours out the blessing upon them. Grace, love, forgiveness, generosity, service, prayer. You heard it from my adorable 18 year old daughter, ministry of presence. She, it's so weird. I didn't even have a talk ready. And I just texted her as I was coming up and I was like, honey, would you just be willing to come up with me? She's like, okay, dad. Um, every single night before she goes upstairs to bed, my adorable little girl, since she was a toddler, she walks up to me and she looks me in the eye. She's got this cute little, just dancing blue eyes, big eyelashes, cute as can be. And she looks at me and she smiles and then she leans forward and she wants to be kissed right here every single night. Do you know what that is? That's a blessing. She's just like, I just, just want my dad to bless me again today. So I'm, I bless her every single day. Usually I'll grab her, I'll tell her I love you, I'm proud of you, I adore you, I'm praying for you, I sure like you. I'm so glad that I get to be your dad. Thank you, Lord, that I get to be your dad. Is there anything I could pray for you about? Anything I can help you with? What do you wanna do this week? Are there any dreams in your heart? Any trips you wanna take? I mean, just at various times, I'll just tell her how I feel. I'll just speak blessing over her. Lord, thank you that the teen years aren't bad. They're, all, they're awesome, they're great. God, thank you that my daughter is alive and I get to be your dad. Thank you, Lord, that she's a Christian. Just anything, just to put life and blessing over her. And then someday she's gonna wanna marry. But guess what she's been discipled in? Men exist to bless me. And if they don't bless me, that's not my husband. And then when she has kids, her expectation will be, Dads bless their kids. And that's how blessing starts. It has to start with someone. It has to start somewhere. So I'm asking it to start with you and I'm asking it to start now. Father, thanks for a chance to verbal process on my daughter's 18th birthday. And God, I didn't know it was gonna go like this. A little bit of soul surgery, maybe tonight for us all as men. And God, we, we think of that section in James too, where it just, it does talk about the tongue. James 2 and 3, that, um, that God, sometimes with our tongue, we, we, we bless and we curse. And God, as men, we're convicted in the spirit. I can sense it in the room that <sighs> cursing has come out of my mouth. What I said to my wife, what I said to my kid, what I said to my grandkids, what I said to my brother, my brother in Christ. Ah. Well, we say the Lord rebuke you. We say in the Lord, there is no curse that cannot be broken. There is no uh, thing done that can't be undone by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no generational legacy that can't be rehardwired and rewritten by the grace of God. And uh, Lord, I thank you for my blessing, uh, Alexi, my 18 year old daughter who I love with my whole heart. And God, I pray that uh, the men in this room and the men who give us the honor of hearing this message, would realize that uh, we're blessed, not cursed, and that we are sent out to be a blessing and not a curse. And that if we come from a blessed family line, it's a blessing to continue that line. And even if we come from a cursed family line, we thank you, Father, that you adopt us into your family, you call us sons, and you let us start a brand new legacy of blessing. And I pray for the kids that aren't even born. I pray for the grandkids that aren't even born. I pray for the great grandkids that aren't even born. That when the question is asked, was your family blessed or cursed? They'd say, it was blessed. And when the story is told, well, when did that start? Well, my, my dad, my grandpa, 
my brother, my boyfriend went to real men and God blessed them and they've just been blessing ever since and, and the blessing has continued for generations in Jesus' name, amen.